Chào mừng các bạn đã quay trở lại với kênh Học IELTS cùng Ailes Thầy là Huy Trong quá trình ôn luyện, bạn phát âm thật là chuẩn Bạn thuộc lòng nghĩa của một từ Bạn tự tin vào kiến thức của mình Tuy nhiên, khi bắt đầu bài nghe Bạn thường xuyên trả lời sai, mất dấu Và không hiểu người đọc đang nói cái gì Nguyên nhân ở đây chính là phản xạ của não Bạn chưa nghe đủ nhiều nên não chưa kịp nhận biết bạn đang nghe cái gì Nào, hãy cùng thầy luyện bài nghe listening test số 8 ngày hôm nay nhé Section 1. You will hear a new student, Tom, talking to a student representative called Rachel about university clubs. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 1 to 4. Hi, welcome to Freshers' Week. I'm Rachel. Can I help you? Oh, hi. Yes, um, I was hoping to find out about some clubs I could join. Well, all the club stands are here in this hall. What were you interested in? Um, not sure. <laughs> I wanted to do something where I could meet people. Well, take this leaflet with details of all the clubs and see what you think. Oh. It'll probably depend on what day you're free. Like on Mondays, there's the film club. Then on Tuesdays, you've got the climbing club. That's really good. I'm in that. <laughs> <laughs> Then on Wednesdays, you've got chess, if you want something a bit more intellectual. But you should look through carefully because all the clubs run extra activities as well as their normal meetings. Oh, yes, I see. So, it looks like the film club has discussions after the films. I'd quite like to go to those. Then, climbing. <laughs> Goodness. It says here that the university has its own climbing wall. That's impressive. And they go on weekend trips. Mm. Cool. And it says the chess club normally just does games with whoever turns up. But it also runs competitions sometimes. But I bet you've got to be pretty good to do that. Yes, I think so. And how many people are in the clubs? Are they all really full? Well, obviously they're all different. So, for example, the film club has just increased its membership from 85 to 125. But I think they're hoping to extend it to 150. The climbing club's quite small, 40 people. And the chess club is fairly healthy at 55. Right. OK. So who do I see if I want to join these clubs? Well, if you go round the stands and speak to the people there. For the film club, that's the events organiser. Um, for climbing, you'll need the club secretary. And the chess club is organised by one of the maths tutors. OK? Yep. <laughs> I think I'll start with the climbing club. It sounds good. Oh, well, as I said, I'm in that, so I might be able to help you a bit. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 5 to 10. OK. It says in the leaflet that they get together twice a month. Is that right? Yes. Oh, you must join. It's really good fun. <laughs> we go away quite a bit to North Wales. And every year we have a special excursion, usually to France, which is where we're going this year in the spring. The weather's too unpredictable in the autumn. Wow. That sounds good. 
But it must cost a lot. Yeah, but we try and save up for it through subscriptions. So rather than having a huge sum to pay in the month we go, we collect those weekly, so it spreads it out. Good idea. I think I'll definitely join. There are quite good benefits you get from joining. I mean, you need that, don't you? And the university clubs normally try and do deals with local businesses, so it's really worth joining. Like in the climbing club, they've got a special arrangement with one of the shops in town. So if you show your card, you can get money off equipment. Don't think the discount extends to clothes, though. That's really worth it then. I'll go over and talk to them now. Okay. Hope you do join. <laughs> oh, and another thing I meant to say: if you do become a member, you automatically receive a magazine once a year. It's quite useful and interesting because it goes out to all the national climbing clubs. And the other thing is, if you come to every session, then you can get a complimentary ticket to the big exhibition that's held in Cardiff every year. So hope to see you. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot for your help. Now turn to section two, on page one hundred and one of your book. You will hear some information about a medical museum in London, called the Hunterian Museum, which is part of the Royal College of Surgeons. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Now listen, and answer questions eleven to fifteen. Good evening. I'm here to tell you about the Hunterian Museum in London, which is part of the Royal College of Surgeons. Although a medical museum, it is open to the general public. The museum specialises in the history of the study of anatomy, and especially the work of John Hunter. In the eighteenth century, if you would like a free guided tour of the museum, then come along at one o'clock any Wednesday. Spaces on the tour are limited to twenty-five, though, so it's best to reserve a place by phone. And these tours are for individual members of the public, families, and small groups of friends only. Tours for groups of school students can also be arranged, and these are also free of charge. Teachers are encouraged to make a donation of around three pounds per student if they can afford it, but this isn't obligatory. What teachers must do, however, is phone to agree a time in advance, as only one school party is allowed in at a time. Then there's an online booking form which you can use to confirm the booking, or just send a letter if you prefer. For older students and adult groups, we provide more specialised tours, and these cost a hundred pounds for a short tour of thirty minutes, or if you want a slightly longer one, it's a hundred and thirty pounds for forty-five minutes. There is a student discount, however, so college groups would pay seventy-five pounds for the shorter tour, for example. In terms of facilities available at the museum, teachers and others should bear in mind that space is very limited, as we're in the centre of London, with many cafes and restaurants nearby. 
refreshments aren't sold on site, though there is a small shop selling souvenirs. Most of the things on show in the museum are preserved animal specimens in glass cases, so there are no interactive displays aimed at small children. And our tours are only in English, although there is printed material available in other major languages on request. There's also a lecture room, which groups can book for an extra charge, and this is equipped with PowerPoint projector and microscopes. Before you hear the rest of the presentation, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Next, a bit about the history of the museum and the preserved animal and plant specimens you can see there. The museum's named after John Hunter, who was a pioneer in the study of anatomy. He was among the first to understand that the study of other animals could tell us a lot about how the human body works. John Hunter was born in 1728 and came to London to work as an assistant in an anatomy school in 1748. Here John did his training in the study of human anatomy. It was after 1760, however, that he turned his attention to animals. That's when he became a surgeon in the army, spending three years in France and Portugal, where he started collecting and preserving animal specimens, such as lizards. On his return to London in 1763, Hunter set up in private practice and started to build up his collection of specimens. When he moved to a big house in Leicester Square in 1783, Hunter started to take in resident students and gave the name Teaching Museum to his collection. By the time of his death in 1793, Hunter had collected specimens from all over the world, including the first kangaroo to be seen outside Australia. He had 14,000 different exhibits, with 500 species of plants and animals represented. And many of these specimens can still be seen in the museum today, because in 1799 the collection was purchased by the government, who presented it to the Royal College of Surgeons. And they've been looking after it ever since, which is why the Hunterian Museum is located in their building in London to this day. Now turn to section 3. Section 3. You will hear a female and a male student talking to a female tutor about a self-evaluation form. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Now, Mark and Anna, I have to say that I thoroughly enjoyed your joint presentation on the application of robotics in a non-industrial setting to the group on the 2nd of December, and it is clear that you have both devoted quite a lot of time and effort to it. Have you had a chance to fill in the self-evaluation form for the session? Yeah, we have. So, Mark, what do you think overall? Well, generally I felt the presentation worked very well. In fact, we seemed to hold the attention of the others throughout. And the pace of delivery was fairly even, as were the range of activities we organised. I agree with Mark, but I'm not sure we were comprehensive or academic enough. No comment, really. Except that I don't think there was any question of it not being thorough. I think we were a bit too chatty and too jokey at times, rather than formal. OK, what do you think were the best areas? And which do you think can be improved on? Well, everything could have been improved on. I felt very good about the handouts. We'd spent a lot of time putting them together. They had a very professional appearance as we bound them into a booklet. To me, the handouts were the best part, as we had a very extensive bibliography and the booklet seemed to go down well. The booklet you did for the handout certainly showed you had done a lot of work. But I think that you put too much material into it and people got distracted by it. Perhaps you could have cut the handouts by about a third. I see. When I come to think about it, maybe you're right. OK. But there were times in the middle of the presentation where things did go a bit astray. I think that was my fault when I got the PowerPoint slides out of sequence and I had difficulty getting back on track. Mm. I also think we rated our technical ability too highly, especially when operating under pressure. I had never done a presentation with technical equipment before, so it was a steep learning curve for me in particular. Yes, I think you could have done with a bit more practice with the equipment beforehand. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen carefully and answer questions 27 to 30. What about the next item on the feedback form, the aims and objectives? I think they were very focused and we followed them through well, I think. We wanted to show how Europe was lagging behind other areas of the world. Yeah, I think they were clearly set out. Yes, agreed. No comment there. The diagrams and charts were appropriate. Yes, I have put that too. They did work well in helping to illustrate and break up the presentation by cutting down on the number of words and text on the screen. What about delivery? Well, I think our performance was average. It was difficult to coordinate speaking and presenting the material at the same time. I was quite self-conscious of what I was doing. It was down to a lack of experience. Unfortunately, both of you had the habit of standing in front of the projector, so you kept blocking the image on the screen. To me, this is the area that requires the most improvement. The section on the predictions of the commercial application in the future, I think, appeared a bit haphazard. Uh, to me, it was a weak point of the presentation. And I think that some of the slides could have had fewer words. And we could have done some fancy graphics with the words. If you had to give yourselves a mark overall, how much would you give out of ten? Six, maybe. I'd be happy with that. Though bits were probably nearer a seven. So I'd say a six. Anna, what do you think? I think for me it's perhaps a seven. OK. Did you find the task and the evaluation useful? I think... That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turn to section 4. Section 4. You will hear a talk on local businesses at a university business centre. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. The subject of this evening's talk at the North Bank Business Centre is local businesses in the area surrounding the university and the benefit they bring to the employment prospects of people in the local area, especially young people at the beginning of their career. We established the centre in response to approaches from several business people in the area who had wanted to start up new businesses but who had not managed to find any help locally and did not know where to turn. Moreover, they had all, without exception, come up against enormous bureaucratic obstacles. We therefore invited them in as a group to meet the members of the department and the students. Stemming from that is the centre, which now focuses mainly but not exclusively on business startups. Just after the centre was set up, snapshot research conducted by the department over the telephone gave some startling results. The information about local businesses revealed that three out of every ten local business startups that we could collect information on had failed within the first six months, and another five had gone within the year, leaving only two. The most common reasons given for the business's closing were, first, high rents, which are 33% higher than the national average due to the area being very central. Second, lack of knowledge about grants, basically because of ignorance about how to access them. And thirdly, a lack of business support, because they did not know where to obtain advice from. Since the centre came into existence three years ago, we have helped change this climate of failure. The current statistics show a remarkable turnaround in the fortunes of local businesses. And now, after a year, only two businesses close out of every ten, compared to eight before the centre was set up. Six local businesses are now taking part in a work placement and monitoring scheme, which is of mutual benefit to ourselves and the companies involved. O Foods, a small start-up company with nine employees involved in organic food and based at a local market, has one final year graduate doing a year-long study on improving the stock turnaround. This was a particular problem because the company found that they were losing sometimes up to 30% of their stock. Another start-up is Innovations, which deals with producing video games. This company, which employs only five people, all under the age of 25, is receiving support in attracting business partners and achieving production targets. In the smaller business category, Sampson's Limited, a courier company which is interested in developing a taxi service, is being offered help with their business expansion plans. Another small niche company called Vintage Scooter, which specialises in revamping old scooters, is taking part in a product monitoring scheme, offering customer service up to a year after purchase to check the quality of their restoration. The first of the two medium-sized companies that the scheme is monitoring is Build Limited, which employs 47 people. A comparison of their products and services 
with other businesses in the area is being carried out by a researcher who is trying to support them in their efforts to extend the company's product range. The last company, Jones Systems, is perhaps the most interesting because it has been the victim of considerable personnel problems, which have been affecting the day-to-day -day operations of the company. And so, we are looking at conflict management and team building within the company. To sum up, advisors help the companies look at different business options and models, apply for grants, deal with employment issues, systems creation, and also provide accommodation at the centre to help them start up. E-mentoring for fledgling businesses is also in operation for those who find it difficult to attend the centre personally. The programme is funded by grants from local authorities. That is the end of Section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Các bạn cần chú ý, mỗi ngày lượng nghe ít nhất từ 30 phút đến 1 tiếng hay 2 giờ. Các bạn thấy video ICL Listening Test ngày hôm nay như thế nào? Có bất kỳ câu hỏi hay thắc mắc nào cần giải đáp hay không? Đừng quên comment ngay phía dưới để thấy biết ý kiến của các bạn nhé!